well students today we will be discussing c4 pathway or h and select pathway which is also named as decarbo decarboxylic acid pathway as per this pathway is concerned it was discovered by h and select in 1966 1970 but before the discovery detailed uh, pathway which was given by hatch and stack number of scientists worked on it they used the carbon dioxide c14 labeled isotopes to sugar sugar cane leaves and they found after a short period of time that was traced in carbon 4 Uh, the carboxylic acid is like malate and aspartate but hatch and select gave a detailed pathway of this uh, reactions detailed reactions of this pathway that's why it's also named as the hatch and select pathway it's unique among carbon dioxide uh, is a unique pathway of carbon dioxide fixation among tropical grasses you see like maize sugarcane sorghum they are having this type of a unique pathway of carbon dioxide fixation this pathway is also called as the c4 pathway because the first stable compound which is formed there is a c4 carbon compound malate or an aspartate it is also called as a c4 dicarboxylic acid pathway because the product formed there is a carbon 4 decarboxylic acid see this pathway if you will see it is basically a contributory pathway c4 pathway is a contributory pathway in c4 plants which are mostly tropical grasses and it is there to have an efficient fixation of carbon dioxide you will find this type of pathway in around about 1500 plants which includes three monocot and 15 dicot families this metabolism is encountered in about 1% of all known species so having said that this pathway is basically a contributory pathway to a c3 pathway which is the basic pathway for the fixation for the production of hexoses before we will understand the c4 pathway and its mechanism we'll have to understand in these c4 plants which include tropical grasses which include the sugarcane maize sorghum they have a special type of leaf anatomy that anatomy is called as the kranz anatomy kranz is a german word means wreath are a ring you see in case of these plants you will find a midrib surrounded by means of a vascular bundle surrounded by means of bundle sheath cells so you have a leaf anatomy where a midrib is enveloped by two concentric layers of inner larger bundle sheath cells and outer mesophyll cells so we have here an anatomy of a leaf it's the epidermis these are the mesophyll cells and these are the bundle sheath cells this is the vascular bundle xylem and phloem so we have here basically a leaf anatomy where the two cells mesophyll cells and bundle sheath cells are connected by means of plasmodesmata but at the same time there is a the chloroplasts within these two cells is dimorphic in nature we have a chloroplast in case of mesophyll cells and the chloroplast in case of the bundle sheath cells in case of the mesophyll cells you will find chloroplast is smaller with distinct grana but lacks rubisco in a state has a pepco see there are two enzymes ribisco as we have seen in case of c3 pathway 
it plays an important role in the carboxylation process, the fixation of carbon dioxide. And this enzyme is not present in case of the mesophyll chloroplast of C4 plants, but it is, there is an enzyme which is called as a PEPCO, phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase. And in case of bundle sheet cells, you have a larger chloroplast, but they lack grana, they are agranal with citroma lamellae. And it is citroma contains the rubisco, no pepco. So you have understood the Kranz anatomy now. The Kranz anatomy of C4 plants is there is presence of in bundle sheet cells surrounded by means of mesophyll cells, and they are interconnected by means of the plasmodesmata. And at the same time, we have found the chloroplast of it is dimorphic. That is, chloroplast of it, the mesophyll cells has these features, and the chloroplast of the bundle sheet cells have these features. So you have understood the Kranz anatomy now. After this, we will try to understand where this C4 cycle is taking place. See, the biochemical reactions of this pathway is completed between chloroplast of bundle sheet cells and mesophyll cells. So here, a carbon dioxide fixation in case of C4 plants involves the two cells now. We'll have to see the mechanism. What is happening in the mesophyll cells? What's happening in the bundle sheet cells? See, atmospheric carbon dioxide, which will be here, is to be fixed in the cytosol of mesophyll cells first. We have there a first fixer compound, which is called as a PEP, phosphoenol pyruvate. That is a three carbon compound. And that carbon dioxide which comes here will not be taken directly. It's to be taken, it is to be converted to be in presence of water, in presence of an carbonic anhydrase enzyme. It is to be converted into bicarbonates and then it will combine with PEP in presence of an enzyme PEPCO, where there will be the reaction that is the carboxylation reaction. So let us discuss it in a step-wise manner. We'll be coming to this figure again and again. So we have to see first what are the steps of this pathway. Steps of this pathway are you have first steps which is taking place in the mesophyll cells. What's taking place in the mesophyll cells? The first step is the carboxylation. As I mentioned, it occurs in the cytosol of mesophyll cells. And atmospheric carbon dioxide combines with the three carbon compound, PEP, phosphoenol pyruvate, in presence of an enzyme, PEP carboxylase. I would like to mention here this PEP co is a unique enzyme to C4 plants. It is not a dual enzyme. It does not go for oxygenation. It is only meant for the carboxylation. And this enzyme has a very high affinity for the carbon dioxide. And it can fix the very low carbon dioxide, even 0.1 micromolar concentration of the carbon dioxide even. And at the same time, it is insensitive to oxygen concentration. That means it will not undergo oxygenase, as we have seen in case of the ribisco. Ribisco is a dual enzyme. Pepco is not a dual enzyme. It has a very high affinity for the carbon dioxide. So these steps which are taking place here, there is also a formation of these four carbon compounds which are produced there, prior four carbon compound which is formed there, which can be oxaloacetate, because when carboxylation is taking place, prior to carboxylation, as I said, carbon dioxide is dissolved in water inside the cytoplasm and ionized into bicarbonate in presence of carbonic anhydrase. So, bicarbonate then combines with phosphone, phosphoenol pyruvic acid. So OAA is formed there, but it is an unstable product. 
it is further converted to malate or aspartate and then that malate is transported through further reactions converted and transported to the bundle sheet cells so we have here a situation this that malic acid or aspartic acid production is taking place there basically phosphoenol pyruvate is a three carbon compound in presence of this bicarbonate compound in presence of an enzyme pepco pep carboxylase there is a formation of an oxaloacetate which is a four carbon compound and there can be also the formation of an aspartate but this oaa within the mesophyll chloroplast is further reduced to malate or it can be reduced to aspartate even using any dph which is generated through non cyclic photophosphorylation so this completes the the first step of c4 pathway now malate is formed there and that malate is to be transported to the bundle sheet cells here oxaloacetate is changed to malate in presence of nadph2 and a malic enzyme but malate is produced and is transported to the bundle sheet cells what will happen in the bundle sheet cells now in bundle sheet cells this four carbon malate which is formed there is to be decarboxylated it will be decarboxylated to pyruvic acid and then there will be a release of carbon dioxide similarly if there is a aspartic acid is produced there as i said malate or aspartate it is also deaminated to form pyruvate and carbon dioxide see carbon dioxide is being pumped inside the bundle sheet cells now so pyruvate is to be returned to mesophyll cells where it will be used for regeneration of pep phosphoenol pyruvate in bundle sheet cells there is an enormous accumulation of carbon dioxide concentration around the ribosome which favors carbon dioxide fixation by c3 cycle see when in bundle sheet cells by c4 pathway carbon dioxide has been pumped inside the stroma chloroplast of bundle sheet cells where there is an accumulation of carbon dioxide concentration around the rubisco but i said rubisco is a dual enzyme because when it has a more of carbon dioxide available it will work as an carboxylase if there is a more of the oxygen available it will act as an oxygenase as is seen in case of the c3 plants but here you have an advanced mechanism that carbon dioxide concentration is maintained around the ribisco and also during decarboxylation carbon atom 4 of malate is released that is to be taken for c3 cycle where it will undergo a process of carboxylation reduction formation of hexose and all the processes which are taking place in the c3 but the carbon dioxide which is the fourth carbon of this malate will be used as a carbon one atom of the phosphoglycerate triose will be formed in the c3 cycle next we have seen that malate with nadp in presence of a malate enzyme it forms the pyruvate it forms the nadph and releases the carbon dioxide so this is the reaction which is taking place and the end product is the carbon dioxide here and the pyruvate carbon dioxide is fed to c3 cycle for actual fixation of the carbon dioxide then there is a 
second carboxylation. So the first carboxylation has taken place inside the mesophyll cells. That too in the cytosol of the mesophyll cells. And then second carboxylation has taken place within the citroma of the mesophyll cells. And since Rubisco functions as a carboxylase, because at this point of time, there is a high carbon dioxide concentration within the citroma of Mandelstreet cells. So it will act as on the carboxylase. And also within the, as I have already mentioned, within the citroma, since C4 is pumping the carbon dioxide there, the carbon dioxide oxygen ratio is very high around the ribisco. So ribisco will act as carboxylase under these conditions. And that is why in case of C4 plants, Rebisco strictly behaves as in carboxylase. So there are least chances of the photorespiration in case of the C4 plants, which is more prevalent in case of the C3 plants. So in C4 plants, we have seen now, there are carboxylation at two points. One is taking place at the mesophyll cells where atmospheric carbon dioxide is fixed in presence of the PEP and PEPCO with PEP in presence of PEPCO. And then the second carboxylation is taking place within the citroma of the meso bundle sheet cells in presence of the rubisco. As such, this process is also called, since there is a carboxylation at two points, is called as a carboxylation pathway also. See, as we have seen this case, it has been found in case of one of the mutant, a mutant which is a PEP carboxylase deficient mutant, where PEP carboxylase is not produced, as in case of amaranthus, which is a C4 plant. In absence of the carbon dioxide concentrating system, because it's also called as a carbon dioxide concentrating system, that is by means of the PEPCO. In absence of that, in a mutant, it shows a marked increase in photorespiration. That means a C4 plant is there and there is no carbon dioxide concentrating system. So it will behave, Ribisco will behave as a carbo, as oxygen is also under the high concentration of oxygen. So we have seen that Carboxylation is taking place at two places. And in addition to this, in these C4 plants, you will find there is a shuttle mechanism. Shuttle mechanism exists between bundle sheet and the mesophyll cells, where some intermediates of Calvin cycle are taken to mesophyll cells. And after reduction, return back for further reduction to hexose. So there's a bypass surgery going on bypass pathway going on. That is some intermediates which require the reduction will be taken to the mesophyll cells where they will be then taken back. That will reduce the load around the rubisco. There will be less oxygen available around the rubisco. This limits the electron transport activity and evolution of oxygen within bundle sheet cells. This is also one mechanism there because there will be less electron transport activity. There will be less evolution of oxygen within the bundle sheet cells. That makes the ribisco strictly as a carboxylase. And in bundle sheet cells, it lacks pigment system second and carry out cyclic electron flow, catalyzed by pigment system one. Then this pigment system one is operational, that is a non-cyclic photophosphorylation, and there is less evolution of oxygen. So it also limits the evolution of oxygen around the ribisco. As a result, this cycle, which is performed in presence of the ribisco, will be exclusively as a carboxylase process, there will be no photorespiration. So we have seen how atmospheric carbon dioxide has been taken 
in cytosol by a PEP in presence of PEP4, then it has been converted into oxaloacetic acid, but that is then changed to malate and then or aspartate, and then that is carried to the bundle sheet cell chloroplasts, where decarboxylation takes place there, and then pyruvate is formed and carbon dioxide is fed to the C3 pathway. That's why I said C4 pathway is a contributory pathway. It's contributing carbon dioxide. It's contributing carbon dioxide to C3 cycle. And then the next step is the pyruvate has to be converted into the PEP. That's the regeneration of the PEP. And that regeneration of PEP is a step which is taking place in presence of an enzyme, pyruvate phosphate dekinase. Pyruvic acid within mesophyll cells is converted back to PEP in presence of ATP and orthophosphate in presence of an enzyme pyruvate phosphate dekinase. Since you will see in this conversion, there is a formation of AMP, adenosine monophosphate. What is happening here? Pyruvate with ATP in presence of this orthophosphate and in presence of an phosphopyruvic acid dekinase pyruvate, phosphate, decanase, decanase, there is a formation of a PEP, AMP, and there is pyrophosphate also formed there. The further reaction, which will be pyrophosphate, will be converted in presence of an pyrophosphatase to two orthophosphate, while as the AMP, which is produced there, it will require energy. This setup requires more energy. ATP will be used here, that will form the 2-ADP, and then 2-ADP will be in presence of ATP synthase, 2-ADP will be produced there. So the important setup here is the regeneration of PEP. For the regeneration of PEP is an enzyme, which is pyruvate phosphate dikinase, and that pyruvate phosphate dikinase is an enzyme, which is unique in tropical plants. As I said, C4 pathway is taking place in the usually in tropical grasses, in tropical plants. So we have this enzyme which is activated by light and functions only at higher temperature. In a way, this enzyme is also cold labile because it is this enzyme which will be in presence of light, it will work. There should be very high temperature. If there is less temperature, it will not work. So regeneration will not take place there. So in a way, we have seen that regeneration is an important step here in case of these tropical plants. And overall, we have seen that C4 pathway is more energy expensive. When we compare it with the C3 pathway, we'll find that in case of C4 pathway, there's more energy use because we have more ATP utilized in this pathway. And if you will see the overall budgeting of it, in C3 pathway, fixation of one carbon dioxide mole requires two NADPH and three ATP molecules. But similarly, in case of C4 pathway, it requires two NADPH and five ATP molecules. So there lies the difference. This C3 plants, they require less of the energy, but C4 plants require more of the energy. Overall of reaction, overall reaction of C4 pathway is as six PEP, which is a three carbon compound, and six RUBP because C3 is also taking place, six carbon dioxide and 30 ATP molecules and 12 NADPH are used there. So there is a formation of this PEP regenerated back, RUBP regenerated back, and then there is a production of glucose. So it has used more of the energy. C4 plants are expensive, but 
they are also considered as photosynthetically efficient plants. Before we will go into the significance of the C4 pathway, there are certain variant mechanisms of C4 pathway. See, plant physiologists have worked, they have observed variations in the mechanism of C4 mode of photosynthesis in several plants. See, it, this, this uh, variation is because based on the pattern of decarboxylation of four carbon decarboxylic acid. See, there are three types of categories where uh, decarboxylation is taking place within the bundle sheath cell stroma. How carbon dioxide will be released there, how it will be pumped there and released there. On that basis, plant physiologists have found three categories of variants. They are named as NADP, ME type. That is NADP, malic enzyme type. Another is NADME type. And the third type is PCK type. Let us discuss these types. As I said, it's on the basis of how decarboxylation will take place there. In this category, decarboxylation process utilizes NADP, specific manic enzyme. As I said, it's named as NADP me type, which we have discussed in our figure also, maize, occurring in maize, sugarcane, and sorghum. And then the another type is a NAD, ME type. As the name signifies here, decarboxylation occurs in presence of NAD, specific malic enzyme. There it is NADP, here it is NAD. It occurs in amaranthus, parchulaca, and then there is one more type, which is called as PCK. PCK is on the basis of the PEP carbooxykinase, where in this category, directly OOA, oxaloacetic acid, is decarboxylated. So there is no conversion to malate. It is directly decarboxylated in presence of PEP carbooxykinase. Otherwise, reaction is sequence of reactions is quite similar to that of the NAD ME type. And so there is no malic acid production. Directly OAA is taken and decarboxylated. It's found in case of these plants. So we will see what are these variants as one variant we have already discussed. These variants are on the basis of how it's carrying or pumping carbon dioxide here. See, one variant is one to 12 reactions, NAD, ME type, that is this. This is the first reaction, this is the second reaction, it's taken here, then taken here, then by, and then here in presence of NAD, malic enzyme, this is one type. It's releasing carbon dioxide here, and then going through pyruvate, Pyruvate is going this way, and these are the regeneration processes, and the PEP is regenerated. So one to 12 steps, which we have seen this way, is seen in case of some plants, which is called as the NADME type. It involves the mitochondria also. And the third variant, which is called as the PCK type, in this PCK type, which is shown here in the form of a red arrows, the reaction goes this way. Directly OAA, R aspartate, R aspartate, directly OAA is releasing its carbon dioxide to C3 cycle. And then in presence of an enzyme, PCK, that is the enzyme carboxylase kinase, which release the carbon dioxide here and regeneration of pyruvate is taking place, PEP is taking place by these reactions. So these are the variants. But overall, the pathway is same, that is carbon dioxide will be pumped by this pathway to this C3 cycle, where the normal dark reaction or 
fixation of carbon dioxide to carbohydrates is taking place. Now, what is the significance? We have seen the mechanism. We have seen the variants in case of the C4 plants. What are the significance of the C4 pathway? C4 plants are capable of higher rates of photosynthesis due to high affinity of PEP4 to carbon dioxide. See, I said it can use the very low carbon dioxide concentration, 0.1 micromolar concentrations. And in case of Ribisco, that has a that has a less affinity for the carbon dioxide. That's that that, that, that that's a dual enzyme also. And PEPCO can operate under very low concentration of carbon dioxide and shows insensitivity to oxygen. So it will behave as a carboxylase. C4 plants are highly evolved over C3 plants. That's why you see there is no photorespiration taking place in the C4 plants. That will minimize the yield also. That's why scientists are attempting to mimic this evolutionary process by introducing PEP carboxylase genes from C4 plants, that's maize, into C3 plants, rice. They have a goal of boosting crop productivity because I said there's a minus photorespiration in C4 plants. And which is the game changer here? There's a PEP carboxylase. Scientists are attempting to mimic it. They are introducing the genes so that in rice plants, there will be the formation of the PEP carboxylase and that in turn will have a more affinity for the carbon dioxide and the Ribisco will not act as a carboxylase and oxygenase. It will only act as a carboxylase under those conditions. This is the research is going on and C4 plants are photosynthetically more efficient due to the absence of photorespiration. Clear cut on this because no photorespiration is taking place in the C4 plants. So it will have, C4 plants will have more yield. They will have high yield. And C4 plants grow best in tropical areas. They thrive best in tropical areas as they have high higher light requirement. They require more light. So that's available in tropical areas. And they grow in full sunlight because there is no light saturation taking place in these plants. And in addition to this, they are, they are also conserving water. They have a low transpiration ratio as compared to C3 plants. They cannot, they can tolerate saline conditions due to the occurrence of organic acids because they can grow in saline conditions as they have an organic acids within them. In addition to this, they have an ability to tolerate water citrus conditions. As I said, they conserve water even when stomata is closed. Photosynthesis can take place in very low carbon dioxide concentration because there is a carbon dioxide concentrating system. Because PEP is, PEPO is resulting in the pumping of carbon dioxide to the citroma of the bundle sheet cells where a carbon dioxide concentrating system remains there even if the stomata is closed. And C4 plants are resilient, well adopted to hot, as environmental conditions, they are conserving water. As you know, the most of the notorious weeds belongs to this group. Well, students, let me sum up. We have seen here that C4 pathway is taking place in C4 plants, which are tropical grasses. And here, the carbon dioxide fixation is taking place between the two cells. One is the mesophyll cell chloroplast and the bundle sheet cell chloroplast. One pathway is pumping the carbon dioxide, concentrating the carbon dioxide within the citroma of the meso bundle sheet cells. And then the C3 is operating there in its, 
in a full capacity without undergoing the photorespiration. As a result, there is a more yield in case of the C4 plants. Though they are using more of the energy, but at the same time, their photosynthetic rates are very high because they, do, they don't undergo photorespiration and they can uh, grow under very high temperature conditions, arid conditions. So, well, students, we have seen, we have summed up in our next video, we'll be discussing the difference between the C3 and the C4 pathways. So, the end is, thank you for the patient listening. I hope it will help you in understanding the C4 pathway. Thank you.